May I come in, sir? Yes, please come. Good morning, everyone. हम लोग आपसे उचित दूरी पे हैं, तो आप चाहें तो अपना मास्क उतर सकते हैं थैंक यू सर सर साहिन आप अपना परिचय दीजिए माय नेम इज साइन सरफी आई कैन फॉर आई हैव डन माई बी एस सी इन फिजिक्स इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन एंड आई हैव डन माई एम एस सी फ्रॉम द सेम यूनिवर्सिटी इन टू लेटर आई गॉट सिलेक्टेड फॉर डी एस टी इंस्पायर फेलोशिप एंड करेंटली आई एम डूइंग माई पी एच डी फ्रॉम माई रिसर्च वर्क फोकस ऑन द फेब्रिकेशन एंड कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ यू वी विज फोटो डिटेक्टर्स बेस्ड ऑन टू डी मेटेरियल्स एंड टू डी थ्री सेमी कंडक्टर हेट्रो जंक्शंस आई हैव क्वालिफाइड सी एस आर नेट गेट एंड डब्ल्यू बी सेट एग्जाम इन फिजिक्स माई हॉबीज इंक्लूड ट्रेवलिंग वॉचिंग मूवीज एंड मेकिंग एजुकेशनल यूट्यूब वीडियोज वेरी वेल वेरी वेल सो यू वॉक इन फोटो डिटेक्टर्स डू हैव एनी पब्लिकेशन Yes, sir. I have published two papers in international journals, and the third one is in communication, and I'm I'm in the process of formatting the fourth one. Wow, very nice. So, Sahin, can you please tell us briefly about your research work? Yes, of course, sir. So, in the first work, I have fabricated a UV based photo detector based on purely gallium selenide. We have fabricated titanium gold metal contact on on gallium selenide. to make metal semiconductor metal geometry this uv based photo detector basically uh, responses in the uv region uh, to la- to a large extent so at around 3 10 meter wavelength the device shows maximum responsivity we also evaluated the performance of the device in the high temperature region and we went up to 220 degree centigrade and we found that our device uh was working fine even at high temperatures in the second part of my research work i have uh, made a heterojunction between gallium selenide and the 3d uh, semiconductor silicon uh you told that you work on photo detectors and uh, as far as we know solar cell there is something called solar cell which also acts in fact on the same principle so can you tell us the difference between a solar cell and a photo detector so solar cell and photo detector basically uh working on the same principle in both the devices the photons gets converted into some electrical signal but there is a fundamental difference between the solar cell and the photo detector in solar cell we don't need to utilize you know we don't need to use an external uh, ap- ex- external voltage but in case of photo detector we need to apply some external voltage the solar cell can uh, give us response without uh and the application of bias it has some inbuilt electric field inside it and because of that we get the output but in case of photo detector whenever the photon falls on the photo detectors we get electron hole pair hole pairs and to separate those electron hole pairs and to get some output current we need to apply some applied voltage so in the literature we can see you have evaluated some of the important parameters of a photo detector like photo responsivity detectivity external quantum physics can you tell me what is photo responsivity what is detectivity and what is quantum efficiency external and internal quantum efficiency photo responsivity is basically the measure of the efficiency of a photo detector so how our photo detector responds to a incident photon that is given by the photo responsivity so photo responsivity mathematically speaking it is amount of current generated per unit uh, power incident on the effectivity of the device detectivity is the ability of the photo detector to detect a weak signal and this is derived from the photo responsivity itself the mathematical formula used for the detectivity is d is equals to r lambda root over a root over divided by root over twice e id where e is the electronic charge and id is the dark current and about the external quantum efficiency it is the amount of photo generated charge carrier per unit incident photo we'll enough from this uh, research oriented topic now as you know in this uh, job we have to teach the ug pg students so choose a particular topic of your choice from the ug or pg syllabus and explain us on the board so sir i will teach bohr's atomic model so Uh, with your permission i'm starting this so the topic of my discussion is bohr's atomic model 
So Bohr's atomic model was one of the uh, fundamental atomic model to describe the atomic structure. So this Bohr's atomic model based on few assumptions. So, the first assumption being that uh, in an atom we have the positive ion core and the electron moves around it in circular object, circular orbits. Now as per Bohr's atomic model the second postulate says that these electrons are not allowed to move in any arbitrary orbit. To move these electrons in a particular orbit the orbit must satisfy some condition that condition is given by uh, the angular momentum in that particular orbit should be L is equals to m v r which is should be equals to n h by 2 pi. So, this will be integral multiple of h cut or h by 2 pi. The third postulate being while orbiting around this orbit while electron orbiting in the orbital when the electrons are revolving around the orbit they do they do not radiate energy they radiate energy only when making transition from an initial state to a final state okay so these are the postulates bohr gave to describe the bohr's atomic model so can you uh, tell us why, can you tell me, can you apply Bohr's atomic model to all the atoms? No sir, Bohr atomic model is valid only for single electron atom. What is a single electron atom? Can you give some example? Single electron atom are those atoms which is, which are only having one electron. Like the most famous example is hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron, then helium plus lithium. 2 plus beryllium 3 plus and another uh, atom we, we can know positronium is also one single electron atom muonic atom so you told that the electrons can revolve in circular orbits uh, so can you derive an expression for the radius of the nth orbit and also can you calculate the velocity of the electron in that particular orbit? Yes, I, I am trying to evaluate that. So, this is the positive ion core. Let us say the charge uh, on it is Z D. So this is the expression I am getting for the velocity of the electron in the inner orbit. Okay, that is very good. Now, can you evaluate the total energy of the electron in the inner orbit using these values? So, we have the expression of Rn. Instead of writing H cut, I want to convert into H so that uh, things becomes easier for me. So, 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, if I want to calculate the total energy of the electron in the nth orbit, we can write the total energy as the sum of kinetic energy, uh, let us say potential energy plus kinetic energy. Now, the potential energy formula is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 here uh, we will be taking minus e for the electronic charge so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r this is the formula of uh, potential energy and kinetic energy is half m uh, vn square vn square is this so I am just writing Vn square for the timing and this will generate 1 by
R infinity into C J D square H C by N the minus N. So this is the expression of the total. So everything was going fine, but you made a mistake at the last line. Can you review it? Oh yes. Sorry, sir. I made a mistake here. So we have multiplied H C, okay, and this N is N square. So I just added some. So here R infinity is the feedback constant. That's okay. So one last question from this topic. Can you use de Broglie's hypothesis to interpret Bohr's quantization law? Yes, sir. We can interpret uh, Bohr's quantization law using the de Broglie's hypothesis. According to de Broglie's hypothesis. According to de Broglie's hypothesis. We know that wave and matter behaves in the same way, and De Broglie gave a mathematical relationship to establish a connection between them. Lambda is equals to h by p or h by m b. Now, as per Bohr's atomic model, the electrons which are moving in some stationary orbit. Now, as per the classical theory is concerned. Whenever some electron or some charged particle is moving, it must radiate uh, some energy. And as for the classical theory suggests, we cannot describe the stability of an atom. So, as per Bohr's atomic model, the electrons doesn't radiate uh, any energy while it is moving into some stationary orbit. Now, as wave and particle behaves in the same way. Uh, if you consider that we have to consider wave the wave should be stationary in nature then only uh, it can be a stationary orbit so if you consider uh, n is equals to one orbit this is the n is equals to one orbit according to Bohr's atomic model and the wave form will be like this as per de Broglie's hypothesis the wave around this orbit should be integral multiple of the wavelength. So, if we consider 2 pi r as the radius, 2 pi r as the perimeter of the uh, orbit, then it should be equal to integral multiple of the wavelength 2 pi r. So, this is one example if you consider n is equal to 2. So, this will be something like this. Similarly, for n is equal to 3, this will go on like this. So, it will be we have to keep in mind that the total perimeter should be the integral multiple of the wavelength. So, if you consider this 2 pi r is equals to n lambda, then we can uh, get the Bohr quantization law. So, 2 pi r is equals to n lambda, and we know lambda is equals to h by mb. So, we are going to put that value here. So, 2 pi r is equals to n to lambda is equals to h upon m v and from here you can get that m v r is equals to n h by 2 pi and this is exactly the Bohr quantization law. So, in this way we can uh, associate or we can just interpret de Broglie's hypothesis uh, and the Bohr's atomic quantization law. Let us change the topic. Tell me what is electric flask? Uh, so, electric flux is the number of electric field lines passing through some area. So, let me just uh, explain it in the figure. Let us say we have the electric field lines. These are the electric field lines. This is the direction of the electric field. Now, if you consider uh, an area, this is the area. Let us say this area has a particular direction 
direction of the area is this and the angle between them let's say theta this is the area the flux will be phi e is equals to integration e dot ds okay so uh, do you know any theorem which relates this electric field lines and total charge yes a gauss law is used to um, to build a relationship between the electric flux and the charge and close as per uh, the gauss law we can write the close integral of e dot ds is equals to q enclosed upon epsilon naught here to apply the gauss law the surface is must be closed so what you do you draw a q the charge q is sitting here so i have to uh, find out the flux through this set of area yes to apply the gauss law the area must be enclosed but here you can see the charge is not enclosed so first of all i will enclose the area so this is one cube so we can just extend the cube up down side etc and we can get some structure like this so i am just drawing it in this way let me just draw it sir so if this is the cube let's say we are considering a big cube so in this if you see you can get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 total 8 cube will be there now the charge is sitting here at one of the cube here let's say here this is the charge now we have enclosed the charge so the total flux coming out of this big cube is q by epsilon not now as this cube has a total of uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 total 6 surface so through one surface it is 1 by 6 into q by epsilon not now out of this one surface we have to consider only one face so if you consider the big face so we can divide it into four parts so one part is 1 by 4th of one face so the total flux coming out of that will be 1 by 24 q by epsilon not so you must to be okay let's leave it so you must be aware of the nobel prize which is given every year can you tell me you got the nobel prize last time in physics 20 uh, the last time nobel prize was given in 2021 this year's nobel prize uh, has not give, been given yet but as far i remember uh, the nobel prize was given uh, one half to two scientists and another half to the other scientist to one scientist the first half was uh, given to uh, i forgot the name sorry sir i have to check it out but it was given for their uh, simulation uh, on earth's climate and uh, a reliable uh, reliable description of the global warming sorry sir i am not able to uh, remind it i have or i have to read about this i forgot for the time mix sorry sir well uh, we are done do you have any question no sir thank you thank you very much